All right, so here we have my 2021 gaming setup, and I think it looks sick. So let's get started. So let's get started with the two PCs that I have set up right down here. So first of all, we have the main gaming PC. So this basically just runs all the games, editing software, it runs Photoshop, it, it runs all my stuff for work, and it, it runs the voice chat and music for the streams. It's pretty powerful, it's got a Ryzen 9 3900X, 16 gigabytes of RAM, which I will be upgrading soon to get better editing performance, and a Crosshair 8 here on motherboard. But of course, the biggest, biggest, best part of it is the RTX 3080, which I managed to get just before Christmas. It is so hard to find these things right now. They're so, they're so low stock everywhere, pretty much. But I just got lucky and I found the right place, and I've been really happy with the performance of that card. I really recommend it for sure. Over here is the subwoofer for the Logitech Z623 speaker system. And then over here is the media slash steering PC. So I have this PC set up to run all the encoding for OBS for my stream. So all my overlays, all my, like my webcam, my capture card, everything that goes into my stream gets sent over here. That basically gets rid of all the load and all, all the lag that would occur by having it all run on this machine while running a game at the same time. And that's pretty much the best way I've found to do it. It means that you get higher refresh rate gaming and also a smooth stream for all your viewers to watch. But yeah, it's got a RTX 2060 Super, which I got free from ASUS pretty much, thanks ASUS. Uh, it's got my old CPU, which was a 1600X from, it, it used to be in this machine over here. It's also got the old motherboard, the B450F Gaming from ASUS. And it's got the 3900X cooler on it, which, which really does a good job at cooling it. There's not too much special about the system. It, it basically, it, it runs as a media server for like movies and stuff. It runs a Minecraft server, it runs the chatbots. It, it runs a lot of stuff, which is why it gets kept on all the time. And it's really, it's really made things so much easier for, for recording and for streaming, absolutely. All right, moving on to the next thing. We have the Xbox One S. I've had this for a long time now. I got it when I think yeah, when Forza Horizon 3 first came out, so pretty much at launch, I've had this Xbox One since. And yeah, it's really starting to show its age right now. It, it takes quite a few tries to load into games. Sometimes it won't even uh, load into a game until you restart it like twice. It's really bad. It probably is because of the hard drive I'm using being trash, but you never know. It could be just age or something. I don't use it anyway. I, I've been playing on PC for the past year or so. So this, this Xbox pretty much just gets used as a Blu-ray player. Coming up to the peripherals, we have the Logitech PowerPlay mousepad, which does wireless charging for all the Logitech mice that you would ever own. Mine is the G703 Lightspeed. Quite a nice wireless mouse. It's got side buttons. We've got a DPI button there and yeah, I like it. It's comfortable. It, it's really smooth to use. Um, we've got the Nintendo Switch back there. Nothing special about that. We've got the Pro Controller and the standard Xbox controller. Uh, another part for the Logitech speakers. We have a Stream Deck over here. So this gets used for my main gaming PC. So it's got like a CPU usage counter, it's got my weather, subscriber counter, Discord mute, Spotify controls, OBS controls for my main PC. And it's also got a speed test button. So if you want to test your internet, you can just hit that button there or run a speed test. So this, yeah, it basically just acts as keyboard shortcuts as well as extra buttons for software on the main PC. And I use it all up because it's way quicker than reaching over and clicking two or three buttons at once while you're in a game on the Switch or whatever. Uh, I have another one of these over here for the streaming PC. And this just pretty much does OBS. So this is all OBS controls. If I want to switch between console, webcam, PC, my starting, my ending scene, my chatting scene. It's pretty much just for OBS, nothing else. It has my key light button here, so if I press this, it turns off the key light up there. Let's move on to that, why not? Uh, so this is an Elgato key light, the standard one, not the key light air. And it's really bright and it's really good considering what it cost me. It, I'm really impressed with the Elgato products. All of them have just served me so well. Um, really would recommend that for sure. Uh, let's go over to here. 
we have the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge, and that's just my old phone that I use for a, a portable camera pretty much, so I can hook it up to the steering PC and have it run as a wireless camera when I need to do some in real life streams, I guess. Over here is the wireless base station thing for the Arctis Pro wireless headset. And I love this headset a lot. It's got so many features and it, it does just so much stuff. Like it's got a screen on the little transmitter. If you're in a Discord call, it will show you who's talking, like who's the current speaker in a Discord call full of 20 people. It's really good. It's, it's wireless and it's got Bluetooth as well. So it hooks up straight to the, the PC um, via 3.5 millimeter into the GoXLR over here. And because it also has Bluetooth, it connects to my phone so I can be scrolling through something on my phone while connected to the PC and it would play through that audio as well. And it can also take calls, but I don't use it for calls. The mic on it isn't particularly great and it's not very comfortable, but other than that, it sounds good. It, it has a lot of features and I love it. I love that it's wireless, it has really good range, it's good. But for when I get, uh, when I get a bit tired of that uh, heavy headset sitting on my head because it's got a battery in it, um, I switched to these HyperX Cloud 2s, which is super comfortable, super light, and almost sound as good as the uh, Arctis Pro Wireless there. They have really, really good value for money, and this also has the battery in there, a spare battery to charge in case your batteries run low. Uh, let's go to the GoXLR now. The GoXLR, probably the best thing I ever bought, ever. It has changed my audio setup so much for me. It's been so simple. It's basically probably like a 10-in-1 device. It's a mixer, it's an EQ, it's a noise gate, it's a soundboard, it's a voice changer. It, it's, it's just, it's so good at everything. And basically, I run all my audio through this, so if I have for example, I don't know if it'll show on the camera, but I've got this one up here set to Spotify, this one for Discord, and this one for the Switch. So I can change the volume of all those, mute them. As you can see when I speak, uh, it comes through over here on the mic, because the mic's just there. And yeah, when I want to switch between like PC and console, all I have to do is come over here, hit the little PC button or the Switch button. Oh, sorry, this is so blurry. There you go, if I hit PC, you'll see that it switches. And if I switch between the other buttons, yeah, it gives me pretty good controls of what I'm doing. Um, what did I miss? The keyboard. Logitech G810 keyboard. I've had this for a while now. Really happy with it. It's been pretty much perfect since I've had it. No issues, no issues at all. And it's mechanical, it's got the Remogy switches. I would recommend it as a good first keyboard if you can find it cheap, for sure. Uh, yeah, I, I don't see any reason to upgrade that keyboard. It's been great. Let's move on to the webcam, which is a Logitech C920 HD webcam. Nothing special about that, it's just your standard stream webcam. I probably will upgrade that to a proper uh, mirror mirrorless camera at some point. I don't know, it's the one thing I feel like isn't the best quality it can be on my streams, but we might do something about that soon. Uh, as for monitors, we got the BenQ RL2455 monitor. That's for the consoles and sometimes the PC when I want three monitors set up. But yeah, this one, it's a, it's nothing special about it. It's just 60 hertz, one millisecond response time. And it's really thick and it's really heavy. Like compared to the rest of them, it's, it's silly. I would not recommend it just because of that alone. It's so strange, but it looks pretty good and I like it. So I'm sticking with it for now. Uh, over here is the ASUS VG258QR which is a 165 hertz G-Sync monitor. And it's really cool. I've got like my little refresh rate counter on the side there, which is part of the monitor's software, so you can customize that, of course. And yeah, this thing's, it just, it looks so good in games, especially when you have a decent graphics card like the 3080 there, that you can push that high of a frame rate. It's, you just can't go back to 60 hertz again, ever. I, I, it's, it's pretty much why I quit playing the Xbox is because I got this monitor and I got a good graphics card and I was like, oh, holy crap, I can't, I can't go back to 60 hertz. This is so smooth. But yeah, definitely, definitely try out the ASUS high refresh rate monitors. They, those all seem to be pretty damn good. Uh, over here, we have a BenQ DW, not DW, I think it's a GW2270 
just your standard 60 hertz DVI monitor. Then above it is the 2270H model, which has two HDMIs, I think. But yeah, this one is connected to the string PC, so I can just move my mouse. Um, normally you can just move it across a normal screen like this, but because I have special software installed, I can move it between two PCs like this and have control of both computers with one mouse, which is really, really handy. Of course, when that doesn't work, I have a backup keyboard and mouse for this streaming PC right there. Also, we have a Google Home Mini and the remotes for my RGB stuff and my HDMI stuff around the back. But yeah, the, the mic we have is the Rode Procaster. Uh, it's got a WS-1 um, windshield on it. It's got a PSM-1 shock mount and a PSA-1 mic boom arm thing. It's all road gear and it's all really nice. It just sits back here when I don't need it. And when I do need it, I just pull it out, sit it in front of me. And yeah, it's, it's just super easy to use. I like it. That's pretty much it for the, the main part of the setup. So if you look down here, you'll see where the cables actually go to. So basically, on this side of the room, there is no power points or anything at all. So I've had to run extra cables bring everything back to the other side of the room over there and then to behind that cupboard where the power points are. Let's move on to the chair then. So this is the Secret Lab Omega Softweave fabric version and it's quite comfortable. It does have a few different features on it. If you move it all back, you can adjust the armrests and all that stuff. It's, it's really nice because it, because it's fabric and not leather, it doesn't get that hot. It's quite comfortable for what it is, and I haven't had any back or neck problems since I've been using it, so I'd say it's done the job. Yeah, it's quite good. Um, I would definitely recommend Secret Lab and try and get a referral code for them as well, because if you know someone that's bought one, chances are they'll have a code to give you like 5% off, which would make it just that much more worth it. All right, anyway, following the cables from earlier, they end up over here and then they go behind the cupboard over to these two UPS units here. So the, uh, the, these both are appropriately named. One of them runs the media PC, and one of them runs the main PC slash gaming PC. And what these do is they, they basically clean up the power that goes into the computers. So if, if there's an issue with the power not being consistent or not being reliable or whatever, it just, it fixes that up, gives it clean power, and it also provides a battery backup. So if the power goes out, for example, let's just simulate that real, real quick here. If we switch off these two power points, you'll see that these will both kick on. They'll tell you how much time they, uh, they can power the machines for. This one says 14 minutes, this one says 11 minutes. And yeah, they'll, they'll give you enough time to shut down the computers. And also these have USB on them. So when the power goes out and you're running on batteries and the battery's down to like 50%, it will connect to the computer via USB and automatically shut it down for you if you don't do it yourself in time. So finishing off, we have some old boxes in the bottom left there. We have a Mario Maker sketchbook there. We've got the Game Over sign. We've got a mini NES and a mini SNES as well as some cables. Uh, and a 2DS XL, which has just a few games installed on it right here. And it's blurry. Don't be blurry. There we go. You can see, I, I like to play uh, a lot of the Nintendo games. They're pretty good. And the 3DS consoles are pretty easy to mod now, so it's not too hard to get a hold of games, particularly. Aside from that, uh, under here is where I charge all batteries for everything. And I also have my Elgato green screen that I like to pull up whenever I work to have a clean background or whenever I eventually figure out if I want to use it on my streams or not, it'll be used for that as well. But for the moment, I think it doesn't look as good as just having a regular background. Like if you compare a standard green screen to this background, I think this looks a bit better for now. And that's pretty much everything. There's not really anything else in here. I mean, there's a few things behind where all the cable management is that I try to hide, I try to keep hidden. There's like some HDMI stuff, there's some networking stuff. But yeah, none of it really is that interesting. So yeah, um, I think that is it. Yeah. So thanks so much for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. 
and also my Twitch and Discord will be linked in the description if you want to check those out. But other than that, I hope you have a lovely day, a lovely year, and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.